Hey, if you're a Forerunner fan and you love to see how things get built, or you just like to watch stuff get built, you can want to watch this video. I'm in Tahara, Japan. We're going to go through the Forerunner production facility here in the Pacific plant. I'm going to tell you all about it coming up right now. Hey, it's Semester Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and my passion is trucks and SUVs, and this is going to be a really cool video. So what I'm going to do is, I can't take video inside the assembly plant, no bueno, but what I can do is I can put up photos. So I'm going to take up some photos and talk you through what's going to go on on the screen. We'll talk more about the assembly plant. The Tahara plant is about 90 minutes southeast of Nagoya, and Nagoya is about 30 minutes outside of Toyota City. Toyota City is the headquarters of Toyota globally, and so you're about an hour southeast or an hour and a half southeast from that location. What's interesting about Tahara is it's on a long peninsula and it's, inter it's a rural country town that has the most produce and flower production in the entire Japan. Another interesting fact about it was that the PR reps that we rode with down to Tahara had never actually been there even though it's only 90 minutes away. Interestingly in Japan they don't drive as much as we do in the United States and so they just don't make that journey. And they told me nobody had ever asked to go to Tahara with them because it's such a long distance away. Incredibly, when we arrived, they let out a big sigh of relief that we had made the journey. I kind of thought this was funny because it wasn't that long of a journey. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. As you can see by this panoramic view of the assembly plant area, there are several shops on site. There are two body shops, there's a body and painting shop, there's an assembly shop, there's two machining shops, two casting shops. So quite literally, after the raw materials get to the, manu the assembly plant area, they'll build a car from scratch and ship it out from that same place. Another interesting fact about this panoramic view is the area you're looking at has all been reclaimed. Now, I was with a translator, and I had to ask her what she meant by reclaimed because it really shocked me that she would use that word. Like I'm wondering if it's a nuclear facility been reclaimed or you know what, what the thinking here is. And she literally said they reclaimed it from the ocean. They brought in trucks full of dirt and they built the whole peninsula there to build a semi plant on top of that. And you'll notice, and I'll zoom in on this in, in the right hand corner, they have a, they, the way they build that corner of this assembly plant is they allow ships to be docked right there. And so it's, it's a pretty incredible assembly plant in that there's no railhead, there's no railroad setting stuff off like we have in the United States. You're not shipping them out on big uh, cargo trailers. Nope, you're putting them right into the cargo ship. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Another interesting fact about this Tahara plant is that it has on site a heliport. There's a helicopter stationed right there. And the helicopter can travel to Motomochi factory in the head office in 15 minutes and Higashi Fuji research facility institute in 45 minutes, excuse me, institute. The idea there is if you're anybody in this plant, and this is what they had told me, if you have a direct issue that you need to have resolved right away, you can board this helicopter and you can fly to those places and get it resolved. I thought that was pretty incredible. Inside the... Now I wasn't able to take any video inside the plant, but I was able to take a lot of photos. And so I did. And so we're going to kind of go through these photos and kind of explain to you what I had saw and what they told me as I did my tour. And so I toured the number one assembly shop. This opened in 70, 1979. It built the Hilux. The floor area of 66,000 metric squared. Almost 1,500 employees running two shifts. Production output was 931 vehicles per day with a tack time of 60 seconds. That means when they start to stop, they build one of these vehicles every 60 seconds. Model produced, like I said, was a 4Runner, Land Cruiser Prado, GX460, and the Land Cruiser. They have a lot of focus on where they're trying to improve in the in the plant, and like most of the plants, they're always trying for more quality, they're always trying for a better working environment, and trying to ease the operation. And they have this doorless assembly method that that my interpreter, I, I chuckled a little bit, my interpreter made a big point about this, and the tour guide was really talking a lot about it, 
And basically, they, they put the doors on last. And most plants have done this. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, they have a video showing, you know, beginning to end. So they bring the frame in, and then they just start putting all the pieces together. And it's a body on frame construction. So they'll put the uh, cabin and the doors. Or, Now it's a body on frame construction, so they'll start with a frame, and they'll lower the, the components on top of it, and they'll bolt them down. It is pretty interesting to see the different photos and how the vehicles are sent in. They're, the bodies are pre-assembled, and so that's why the attack time is 60 seconds. And so they're able just to take the body, put it on the frame, and start adding all the accessories inside the cab. Now assembly is, is pretty much like any other place. They use a lot of robots. In this photo here, I'm showing you they're installing the dash. And what they'll do is they will put down some protective coatings. And you can see that the protective blues. And they'll put the dash in. And in one piece, the robot moves it over. And it'll put it inside the vehicle. And then he will go in and secure it in a few spots. The other thing you notice is towards the end of these photos, and I'll show you on the screen, is there's a lot of guys with white shirts on that are checking the vehicles. This is the final inspection line process. This is it, where the vehicles get sent out. Toyota go back and rebuild them or adjust for quality issues. Now, Toyota's uh, PR team, while I was there, described to me this is basically like our DMV. They look for problems with it and safety and make sure that the vehicle is ready for the road. I don't agree. This is quite the process, and these guys go through it so much more detailed than our DMV would, and they really look for a lot of quality issues. And this is what makes Japanese manufacturing be such a hot topic in the United States, and, and on forums and different places you go for different Toyota vehicles, is that the inspection process by the Japanese inspectors is believed to create a more quality product than what can be built in American facilities that's the conversation out there. I am not going to weigh in on what side I feel on that, but it's a very interesting conversation to have. After the cars are built and they get through the quality check station, they move outside. What's interesting about the out exterior is we do have that test track, and every Lexus vehicle that Toyota builds at Tahara gets driven around the track by another quality inspector. Interestingly, one out of every five Toyota vehicles gets test driven, but every Lexus vehicle gets test driven. Another thing that's interesting of the exterior, as you can see by those photos, is that it the docks are right there on the assembly plant land itself. And so you can see the way they built that so they could have the, the ocean going vessels lined right up. And they load these right there. So they have a big parking lot and they have crews that go out and they drive these cars onto this vessel all day long. They work eight-hour shifts. They drive them up a ramp into the, into the vessel. They park them. They get on a bus. A bus, excuse me, bus comes by, picks them up. They go back. They pick up more cars. They go back and forth. It's also interesting that other automakers ship out of there as well. I saw some VW products. I saw some Honda products that go out of Tahara. And so it's a major shipping destination too. It takes a week for them to ship across to... California, and it takes four weeks to go along the East Coast of the United States. And so these ships are continuously in motion. They show up, for, and the crews get a couple days off. They load the ship. They get back on, and the ship goes back on the ocean to sail off wherever it's heading. Another interesting part of Japan that I want to talk about is how much of a manufacturing giant the whole island is. Japan is one of those places that has an enormous amount of ground that's inhabitable. You can't live on it. There's either volcanic rocks down south that make it really hard to live on, or there's mountainous regions to the north. And so they don't have a lot of large land mass, but they really utilize it. I took the bullet train from Nagoya to Yokohama, and it was just interesting to see how many plants there are and how many energy plants there are. But the other interesting part is, as well is that t Japan has no natural resources. Everything gets shipped in. So they bring in all the raw materials, 
and they build them all in the plants there and they ship them back out. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure if you like what you're hearing, like what you're seeing, hit subscribe, bell notification. That's what we want to do. Uh, make sure you follow us on pickuptrucktalk.com, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just type in pickuptrucktalk. You will find it. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.